In talking about the fundamental operation of the King Vision video laryngoscope, it's important to remember that because the imaging sensor is in the blade, uh, you will not get an image on the display unless the two are connected before you power up. Now what happens is that if you power up without the blade, you're not going to get an image. If you then attach the blade after the fact, you'll get a split image. So if, to, to correct that, you just power off and back on again. Now, if uh, you disturb this connection after it's uh, been attached, then one of two things will happen. Uh, it will either provide a uh, frozen image or the screen could go blank, like that. So it's important to, to hold this in a way to avoid lifting on the display and disturbing this connection in use. We actually suggest that you only need to grab it with a thumb and your first two fingers. Uh, this gives you very good tactile feel as you're introducing the blade into the mouth. Also gives you very fine control if you need to manipulate it uh, once in the mouth. In introducing the King Vision uh, video laryngoscope blade into the mouth, uh, there is sometimes a difficulty with someone with a, uh, a large chest that the, the screen may contact the chest. So there's several things you can do. Obviously, if you can open the mouth a little bit wider, uh, follow the base of the tongue, uh, you can also uh, rotate in from the side, or uh, in, in extreme situations, you can actually introduce the blade first, then attach the display uh, before powering up and visualizing the vocal cords. It's very important with the King Vision video laryngoscope, like other uh, video laryngoscopes, to not uh, attempt to get uh, a, a view that's too deep. In other words, the, the view of the vocal cords is up close and personal. Uh, what this uh, accomplishes is you have a great view of the vocal cords, but the imaging sensor is in the way of the advancing tube. And so it's very difficult to advance the tube and you're typically gonna run into the right border of the laryngeal inlet or the right arytenoid. Um, so it, if this occurs, be sure you back out, lift up a little bit before advancing the tube into position. To remove the tube from the channel, simply stabilize the tube off to the side to the right as you withdraw the, the blade from the mouth. And what happens is this soft, flexible overmold prevents any catching of the tube as you're separating it from the track. With the standard blade, it's important to remove the stylet entirely, make sure the tube is advanced appropriately into position, and then just simply remove the blade from the mouth. The blade curvature was designed to uh, uh, arrive at an appropriate compromise between being able to visualize uh, the vocal cords by looking around the corner uh, without having to uh, manipulate the tissue significantly, yet still allow visualization of an anterior larynx. What this means is that you will not be able to use uh, this blade to directly view the vocal cords, uh, but uh, you should not have to manipulate that much to be able to visualize the cords, uh, even in anterior larynx. Uh, another thing to point out is that the underside of the blade is, is actually visible on the screen, and this is an intentional uh, design uh, so that there's no blind spot uh, and that there's a landmark as to where you're placing uh, the tip of the blade. There is also a video out port that requires a specialized cable uh, to connect, uh, it's a, a mini USB, although non-standard. At the other end, it's a, a standard RCA plug uh, for, to input into any video capture or external display.